Hi, it's Noel from creationeffects.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you quickly how you can make auroras uh, for compositing with your footage in After Effects. And I'll be using the Aurora Effect template from Creation Effects, uh, which you can find in the Mini Effects section. Uh, it's a very basic template and it's really inexpensive. Uh, when you open it up you should see several Aurora presets here, which you can just um, composite with your footage as they are, or you can get in there and customize the way they look. Uh, a brief explanation of auroras in case you don't know. Um, they're also known as aurora borealis or northern lights or southern lights and they're the result of the sun's energy bouncing off of our atmosphere to create these beautiful light displays. And they typically happen close to the poles and I've seen some other effects out there that try to replicate this effect uh, but they weren't very good so I made this template and like I said it's not expensive and hopefully you can use it and it can add a little something to your shot. So just open up any of these presets here and you should see two layers. This one just adds some light rays to the shot. Um, if you select the Northern Lights layer and then go to your Effect Controls panel, you should see a bunch of slider controls which you can use to customize the look of the effect. So I'm going to go through all of these real quick and then I'll show you how you can composite this with your footage. The first one, random seed, uh, if you're not happy with the, the general shape of your aurora, you can try just entering in any random number here and it'll randomly change the shape. The second one, fractal type, these are made with the fractal noise effect. Uh, you can see that if I hide everything except the fractal noise and I'll hide the light rays. Uh, so this is what our fractal noise looks like and if you want to experiment with a different type of noise uh, you can just change this number anything from 1 through 17 and it'll give you a kind of a different look I'll just leave it like it was um, and if you change that you might have to increase the brightness or decrease it or the contrast um, to be able to see it scale width and scale height depending on how you want yours to look if you want um, more vertical streaks, then you would have the scale height really high and the scale width really low. Um, if you want more horizontal streaks, then, well, you would do the opposite. And complexity, that'll add more detail to the, to the rays. Uh, moving down, you've probably noticed that these are all divided into categories here. So the next category is motion controls. Um, the first one there is evolution speed. So you're probably familiar with fractal noise and the evolution, which uh, just change, changes the shape of, the, uh, of your noise over time. So that'll affect the, the speed of that evolution as well as the speed of the turbulent displace. Um, down here, if I hide all of these, uh, this is a noise without the turbulent displace, and here it is with the turbulent displace. So it just warps the fractal noise, and you can set the speed that that warp evolves using that control. Also X speed and Y speed, that'll let you move your fractal noise uh, vertically or horizontally. So you can have them move across the sky at, uh, in any direction by changing these controls here. Turbulence controls, um, like I said, the turbulence adds warp to the fractal noise. So you can customize that warp here and the um, X speed and Y speed you can see if I change the Y speed, it kind of sends uh, waves of warp um, down those streaks. So that might be the look you're going for. And finally, light ray controls. Uh, the source position dictates where all of these streaks converge on. Uh, more than likely, you'll have to zoom way out in order to see it. Um, it but if you have that control selected and zoom out, you should see a little crosshair, probably somewhere up here. And if you move that around, you can see what it does to the, uh, the light rays. And then you've got intensity control here and length control. And there are actually two layers of, of light rays uh, to give you more control. And there are a couple other things that you will likely want to customize that are not in these controls up here. Um, the first one would be the perspective. So depending on your shot, you might want to change the 3D perspective of your auroras. Now instead of making this a 3D layer and then changing the 3D orientation of your layer, 
uh, there's a much easier way of doing it using this corner pin effect. So if you select that and then zoom out, you'll see your four corners um, of your square layer here. And originally these would be at the corners and there would be no perspective. Um, so if your shot is looking straight up at the sky or something, this might be what you want. Uh, more than likely your shot has a horizon. Um, so you would want all of your rays converging onto a, a single area in the distance. So you can just change that by dragging these crosshairs to add some 3D perspective. And you can even animate these to move over time if you wanted. Now you also may want to change the colors and you can do that in the four color gradient effect. If you open that up, you can see there are four points and four colors. So these are the four points. You might have to zoom out to see them. And you can just drag those to any area and then assign a color to that area using the color picker here. So that can come in really handy. So if you're done customizing, uh, you can preview this or just scrub through it to get a feel of what it looks like. And uh, then it's ready to, to composite with your footage. Typically, you'd want to just drag one of these into your main comp. Uh, so I'll just create a new comp here uh, using my footage, which I already imported. And this is actually time-lapse footage that I took in Florida. And you would never see Aurora Borealis in Florida, but that's okay. No one's going to know, except for you, because I just told you. Anyway, if you just drag your Aurora into that comp, and then you can change the blend mode to something like screen or add, um, then it'll show up over your night sky. And uh, you may have some foreground elements, um, and you want to make sure that your lights don't show up over your foreground element. So to fix that, you can just duplicate your footage layer and put one copy above the Aurora, and uh, we'll isolate that layer, and then you can use your mask tool to draw a mask over your, your foreground elements. And of course, you'd want to do a much better job than I'm doing, but uh, that gives you an idea of what to do. So that's pretty much it. The only thing left to show you is this night sky comp, um, which I don't think you will want to use it. You'd, if you have a, an image or some footage, that would be much better to use. It's going to make it much more realistic looking. Um, but if you're just doing a, a simple title graphic or something and you need something kind of cartoony, uh, you can use this night sky effect. There's a couple different star effects here, um, so you can just use whichever one you want. And uh, you can go in there and add more stars or increase the brightness um, using the effects in, on those layers. And then there's a, a night sky gradient in the background too, which you can customize too. And I didn't mention this before, but I would really recommend that you find a photo or some footage of real northern lights and then uh, use that as a, as a reference and try to replicate the look of those lights uh, in one of these comps here. And I think that'll just give you much more realistic results.